<laughs> uh, so uh, here I'm just, I think, I think I got this right. Yeah, here we go. Okay, this is how it's going to work. I'm going to take off this wonderful name. I don't, you don't need that. The timer uh, should be reset. That's not, that's not right. No, we got to put this at 50 minutes. Okay. Uh, and of course it didn't save it. Uh, it's going to start it probably. So yeah, we're going to stop that. Okay. But I, uh, this is what's going to happen. I, I, it's not really going to be just a uh, hundred pitchers. It's, it's like, it's not exactly right because I'm going to ramble about team rotations during this. Okay. So I'm pretty much, I decided I, yeah, my top 100 list is coming out in, um, for PL7 launch. So I can't just like show you the full ranking. Uh, because I feel like I got to have some suspense and everything because that's just way more fun. So I, I'm just going to go in order of the teams. Okay. And that means kind of, I'm just going to be, yeah, I'm just going to kind of go as I go. <laughs> All right. I have this spreadsheet on the right, which is just the names of stuff. I have zero notes written last year. I had like, oh yeah, I remember I wrote this in the top 200 about this guy. I have zero notes. I just spent that presentation just like double checking some guys and I'm going to butcher this. Okay. Um, and remember, this is not a ranking. Okay. It is not a ranking. Uh, this is just me listing them out. Now I am going to focus on a hundred guys and then like really quickly mention some other like fringe guys along the way. It's hard not to because they're part of the context of it, but just uh, get ready. Okay. So start the clock. All right. And we're going to go. Here we go. Jose Barrios. All right. So Barrios, I uh, moved to Toronto. Not good for him. It's probably the worst place for him to go. He's going to get more wins now than we would imagine with the Twins. But then again, the AL East is AL Beast. Um, that defense isn't necessarily good. And who knows where gonna, they're going to play. Um, the curveball is this kind of pitch that should be this big whiff pitch. It's not, but it gets a lot of strikes for him. That's really good. And the fastballs have been always really solid. Changeup goes in and out a lot. I don't really see a world where he isn't a 3-5 to 3 nine era guy he even he's a great undulator because he always goes up and down through the year and finds a way to be there so don't expect an ace but everything will be okay here if you have jose brios a lot of strikeouts volume all that fun stuff uh kevin gaussman yeah worst place he can go is, is toronto i believe in the ability though it's not just san francisco fastball strike rate is elite above 70 percent, close to like even 75 percent, and he has the most consistent splitter in baseball really amazing stuff with that i don't think that necessarily goes away because he's going in toronto sure expect a little bit higher era but i think this is going to be a stud for uh, 180 innings in a winning ball club in toronto um junjin ryu struggled a lot last year i'm actually probably not in on this um the cut the change of still had a lot of o swing to it but the cutter wasn't really nearly as effective the, uh, the fastball wasn't nearly as effective. I think the AL East is getting to him a lot, uh, being in Toronto. It's just a bad situation where I don't really see elite ratios like we used to. And the, the strikeout rate isn't 25% plus anymore. So it's fine, and it should be helpful. But is this someone I want to go for? Not to mention there's an assumption of his health, and I don't know if that's an assumption we can really make. Alec Manoa is dope, and you should feel dope getting him. Um, the changeup is didn't really develop, but the slider is absolutely elite, and the fastball is elite too. We had multiple games of both pitches going over double-digit whiffs on their own. Alec Manoa had about 130 innings last year. Should be closer to 160, 170. I wouldn't be shocked if the Blue Jays are like, oh, we're still competitive. Just Manoa, just keep pitching until your heart's content, to your heart's content, right? 180 is six innings per start for 30 starts. That I think that Mount Manoa can really hint that I'm all for Manoa. Um, other guys I didn't mention, by the way, I just skipped ahead of like Ross Stripling is someone you maybe consider is I have to get my spreadsheet out. Oh my Lord. I am going to fail. <laughs> okay. Wait, wait, wait. I gotta get my spreadsheet. Oh no. Times. Okay. John means is great. He's getting vastly underrated. Uh, the, 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 the wall thing is fine, but I think actually the change can be even better. The fastball can be even better. And we're going to see, I think a better improved curveball. We saw it last year and used it a little bit more. I think it can be a lot better. The shape is amazing. Everything about John means could be even better. And I don't think the floor is like. The 3 5 ERA, whatever the home run rates and stuff, I think those do come down for him. There are so many others like Jordan Lyers on this curveball and slider, whatever. Don't who cares? Uh, Bruce Zimmerman, Grayson Rodriguez could come up. That could be interesting. Keegan Aiken, DL Hall is also interesting. Keegan Aiken, no. Dean Kramer, no. Don't care. Oh boy. Uh, Jane McClanahan uh, is really amazing with a slider and curveball. And I think actually because those are so good, the uh, the Babbitt, the high Babbitt that we see on the fastball is going to come down and that's going to make him more effective. Don't worry about the Rays not using him for six innings because he did that in the beginning, of the, in the middle of the year. And then they want to save him for the playoffs. So they've limited him again. He should be closer to six innings consistently this year. I'm all for Shane McClanahan. 
Shane Boz might not start this season on the team. That's a big issue. It's going to be really frustrating in 12-teamers if you have Shane Boz, and all of a sudden, you don't know if you should be holding on to him or not. So I would be very careful about Shane Boz early in the season, but I think his ability is amazing. Fastball slider is so, so good. He's going to be excellent when he's there. It's just you got to endure the first couple months and be prepared for that if you're drafting him. Luis Patino has a lot of potential. Your fastball is better than the slider currently, and I think before, the slider was really good, and it got kind of worse when it was in, in Tampa Bay. But if the Rays are leaning on him, which they should, they got like no starters, uh, I think you're going to expect a lot of good things from Patino through the year but it's going to be a bit volatile there. Uh, Corey Kluber is interesting uh, because his cutter was around for a moment last year and then it was gone. The velocity is also a little bit down. Breaking ball is still excellent. That's the good thing. The change was introduced because the Yankees were doing that last year. I don't really buy that being a long-term thing, but consider Corey Kluber a little bit the end of drafts maybe because that cutter back. Drew Rasmussen and, and Ryan Yarbrough are also included here. But they are kind of not really anything I'm, I'm that interested in. I think Rasmussen was getting way too fortunate last year, and the slider just is, isn't as good as we want it to be. Nathan Eovaldi was amazing with his curveball in 2020. I ignored it, and I was stupid for 2021. It was still amazing. Really high CSWs, 40% on both years. Uh, the fastball still throwing, being thrown really hard. But the problem is the rest of the stuff isn't so consistent. And I think you're going to see some more volatility this year. It was a 370 array last year. I don't think it becomes that much better, so the ceiling isn't that high. Not to mention the health was an issue forever until last year. I think that's still an issue, too, so I probably won't be pushing him up as high as others uh, this year. Chris Sale, the changeup wasn't getting the whiffs and everything that used to get, but I was still getting in the, like, the outs in play were, were bad, but still getting a decent amount of strikes on it. I'm a little cautious about Sale. The velocity wasn't quite back to 2018 levels. The slider isn't this overwhelming swing strike rate pitch that it used to be. I think you'll still be very good, but I think health and velocity drop is a little bit concerning. That has me kind of avoiding him in drafts. Tanner Houck is amazing. Like I, I, I thought I was going to be more out on Tanner Houck. I'm kind of back in. I think Boston's going to rely on him a lot. I know that they have a lot of other guys, um, and, um, Nick Pavetta, Rich Hill, Michael, Pin uh, Michael Walken, even eventually James Paxton. But honestly, they're going to want Tanner Houck probably right away, maybe as a four or five. And you're going to see that slider do better things. I think it, striker was under 60% on them. That's the biggest issue. I think that does improve. And maybe the splitter helps out too. But I think with the fastball, it's there's enough here to really get excited about Tanner Hawk. Um, Hawk. Uh, Garrett Cole is dope, and he's going to be my number one. I'm just going to tell you right now, the volume in the history is just so good. Don't worry about the, the drop and sticky stuff. He came back up. He was fine. He had a small adjustment. Probably more fastballs down into lefties and more four seamers up. You should be great with that. Uh, Jordan Montgomery has been a lot of talk about him. I don't think much was different last year, and it was the changeup and the curveball are both really good swing striker pitches, but they're not efficient. And the fastball it gets crushed. Both the cutter and the sinker are just not good enough, and it's kind of like a discount Cleveland Guardian type pitcher where you have two secondaries that could be something else, but you need to establish better with the heat to get there. And I don't think that he's getting enough strikes with the, the other stuff to to make him like the secondaries to get be efficient enough to actually take the next leap. I hope he does. He'll get the opportunities in New York. But there is caution. There's a, there's a tough road ahead here. Um, Luis Severino is super exciting, but of course the health is the question, and we don't really know what his ability is. I made these mistakes last year with, with Kluber and Tyone expecting too much. It's a much more interesting year where there's a more talented crop of injured guys coming in, so we don't really I don't know how exactly to treat it. But Severino does have the potential, and you'll know right away. Is he throwing hard? Does he have his breaking ball? Is the change up there? Like you'll know quickly if Severino's working out. So that's a cool positive to taking a chance on him later on. Other guys: Luis Heal, Domingo Herman, and um, uh, Nestor Cortez Jr. I'm kind of not interested in drafts. Cortez overperformed last year. Domingo Herman, maybe if he has that spot, um, a really good curveball changeup is kind of interesting. And Luis Heal is not going to get that opportunity right away, so don't even think about that in 12-teamers. Jameson Tyon will come back eventually, but whatever. Uh, I mean, that'll be interesting. I, I look forward to it. Don't worry. I love Jameson Tyon. It's just like right now we can't really consider him that heavily. Um, Shane Bieber and Austin Martin have time. I'm a little down because the velocity was way down when he returned last year. Uh, in those two starts, I know it's just those two starts and everything, but it was really, really bad. Fastball command was off, and that really is everything for those breaking balls. Those are elite breaking balls. He still had an elite strikeout rate before the sticky stuff stuff because he was healthy, and he still had the sticky stuff. Came back, was not the same. It was a shoulder, really actually a rotator cuff injury. Kind of scary. I don't want to take that risk if I'm chasing a top 10 pitcher. Um, Cal Quantrill, I think, was overperformed. It was a fastball slider. He just got a lot of strikes with it, and like it just kind of worked. I don't think anyone's drafting him expecting it to work, though, too. So he's a guy that, with all these Guardians pitchers, they're going to go longer in games than others. That's a good thing. Cal Quantrill, someone to consider with that. So hopefully he's not so-so Cal anymore. 
He's uh, Nicoderm CQ. I don't know. He, you can wean off him. I, whatever. I'm going to move on. Zach, please, Zach. Uh, has actually more potential than I think we're giving him credit because the slider and change of were elite in 2019 and 2020. They're both really good pitches, and they came down in 2021. So maybe the fa they, they, they can improve this ne next, next season. Um, fastball is still really bad. The curveball was introduced in the, against lefties. It was an effective thing. To keep an eye on it. Maybe the slider improves again, and that can actually open up a lot of doors because you will get the volume. Aaron Savali is a curveball cutter guy who's really good with that, but then opens up the kitchen sink with other stuff and underuses that curveball, which is an elite CSW pitch. I hope to see more of those and really surprise four seamers up or surprise sinkers to get strikes, but really lean on those cutters and curveballs more. There's potential there as well. Uh, Tristan McKenzie, volatile is the thing. You're going to have these games where he has increased velocity. You're going to have these games where he has the Blake's on blueprint working, working well with fastballs up and breaking balls down. It's not always going to be there, and that's going to be a real, real struggle. Uh, so I, I hope to see more of McKenzie and really understand him moving forward better but uh we'll see there i think i'm actually doing really well on time right now uh so it's not someone i want to chase because i think it'd be really a problem early on because i don't think his command is that good i uh, i think i might make my, my, my math i'm doing mental math right now okay eli morgan and sam hedges are two others to consider eli morgan was an interesting streamer the absolute cherry bomb if he had his command of his fast one was getting killed by that the slider and change were good enough to really make him stand out um but sam hedges i uh, is uh, is also really interesting. I think the breaking balls are kind of interesting. Um, but he's, I mean, we'll see if he gets more opportunities. He needs a lot more time to develop. Brady Singer and so many others of the Royals. Uh, <laughs> Brady Singer, I think, is the most intriguing one out of the gate. I mean, slider, fastball combination, high CSWs and stuff. But it's inefficient. And because it's two pitches, I think he just has a worse bat. But it's a sinker that gets hit. Uh, the slider can be very good at times. There are times when you threw like 10 in a row or something and it works really well, but it's just so volatile. And it's like, I don't really see a path forward for him actually being a stable 12 teamer option. Uh, Daniel Lynch, Carlos Hernandez are both really interesting. Carlos Hernandez throws really hard upper 90s with two nice breaking balls, but the command overall is not there yet. That's why you don't see the giant strikeout rates you would expect with that kind of velocity and two nice breaking balls. Um, Daniel Lynch has an amazing slider, and I know it worked terribly last year overall. But this guy is really high potential. Mid-90s fastball. Um, Jackson Culver is kind of interesting, but I'm not going to talk about him. Brad Keller, maybe for a stream and stuff. Same with Mike Miner, but don't really go after that in 12-teamers early on. Eduardo Rodriguez. Uh, everyone loves Eduardo Rodriguez. I don't love him. Uh, I mean, I think he's interesting. I think actually, you know, I was looking at the ADP and everything. Actually, I think it's normalized well enough where... Um, there, you know, you're taking risks anyway. Might as well kind of chase someone who's had a 25% plus strikeout rate at that point. Whip has always been bad. I don't really think that changes too far. Like to assume that Erod could be a 115 whip guy is, I think, way too aggressive. Um, but like 120, 124, or something like that can happen. Uh, he's so inconsistent with if he has his changeup that day. His cutter and slider are just strike getting pitches, and hopefully, he just gets called strike, and that's fine. And the fastball sometimes is overwhelming. Has a really nice force uh, swing strike rate. Sometimes not. And it's like four seamer sinker. And like it, it can drive me nuts. You know, four seamer really performed well last year, but the, it's so volatile and really don't le lean on this so much. Um, Casey Mize, uh, fastball slider and splitter, essentially. Slider and fastball. There are a lot of these guys like this. Uh, that Those were Cal Quantrill's like that. They worked. That's fine. He's a Toby, though. I don't really expect an ascension with the strikeout rate coming unless the splitter really comes into form. The slider isn't this big whiff pitch. Maybe this the fastball can turn into that, but it's not really someone I'm chasing. Derek Scoobal is way more interesting. Fastball that is actually really good. I know it has like negative values and stuff because he had to do everything with it before. But the slider and chain have been developing. He was in a really nice rhythm until really got shut down for three innings. The as the Tigers were like, no, 140, 150 innings, that's it. Now he's going to be unleashed. I'm really excited to see more development because that's what we saw in real time last year uh, from Tarek Skubal. And I think there's some really interesting stuff here. Um, I, I'm very interested this year if I can get him at later in drafts. Um, others to consider uh, with the Tigers, Matt Manning, Tyler Alexander. <laughs> no on both. Michael Fomer, maybe he's going to start. We'll see. He threw really hard in relief last year. Maybe he, that they give him another shot in the rotation because there really isn't much else in that rotation. Dylan Bundy is in Minnesota. Uh, hi, he has one of the best sliders still in baseball. I, I got I gotta say, like it's kind of crazy how good that is. Maybe Minnesota, a team that was like, hey, can somebody to stop throwing fastballs, throw more sliders? Maybe that actually applies to them as well, uh, to, to Dylan Bundy. Don't ignore it, don't draft it. But maybe this works. You know, it's not out of the question. We were still saying he was okay in the beginning of June last year and then just kind of got hurt and fell off the earth, right? Like, there's something here and don't forget that. Bailey Ober had to start with 17 four-seamer whiffs at the top of the zone last year, and it was amazing. I call him Bailey Ober Rizzi because Diego de Rizzi would always throw fastballs at the top of the zone, just paint it red, and then sometimes that breaking balls down. Actually, uh, Ober had some starts with some nice sliders down. It was beautiful. 
I think there's some potential here, but this is going to be kind of rickety at times. Think of him as a streamer early on. I don't really expect the full ascension, but maybe if he still keeps that fastball command and gets some rhythm there. Joe Ryan, everybody loves, and I get it. The fastball is really, really well performing, but there isn't much else after that, you know? And uh, the pedigree, I think, is making him sore. I think there are a lot of other more interesting uh, ceiling guys to go after um, than Joe Ryan, who had a nice stretch and a very small sample against Cleveland and the Cubs twice, and then actually got kind of wrecked by the by the Tigers. That's it. That's all we've seen of Joe Ryan. Obviously, the Olympic stuff, obviously the pedigree, but it's a very risky proposition. I, I don't really know how to feel yet, considering we also haven't seen this breadth of repertoire. It's just really a fastball. So I would be cautious here. Um, other ones, Randy Dobnak, no. Kenta Maeda will come back. At some point, maybe this year, so keep that in mind. And Lewis Thorpe is in that rotation, and they probably will sign someone else. Lance Lynn uh, is still really good. I mean, I don't really know what else to say about him. He's going to get the volume, and that's really great. He's going to have uh, the Russo is going to have to rip the ball out of his hands every time, and that's cool. I will say that his IPSs have been going down. It used to be six plus, and now it's like five and change. Ah, uh, that's not so great, but still, he's going to be there. Good volume. He was actually like a two five ERA, two four until like the last couple starts. It was kind of nuts. So you feel good with uh, Lance Lynn. Uh, I think you're just going to be fine with it. It's not going to be necessarily top five, I don't think. I think there's an assumption of de degradation of some kind, but you're going to be good. Lucas Giolito, uh, slider came into form a bit last year. I didn't really expect it to, and it did. That was really nice. Got out of rhythm, had this moment early on the season with like the early day game with the Boston, um, you know, Boston Parade. Uh, and then uh, you had like, then it just got off kilt and they had the finger thing. It was like this weird month of Giolito, but the second half was way better. You should feel good about this, but I feel like he's a better G, uh, Barrios where he's not going to be a sub three year A guy, but he's going to be really good volume. Uh, strikeouts going to be 110, 115 whip or something like that. Just a little bit better version of Barrios. Um, Dylan Cease is, I've been talking a lot about him because I'm seeing so much hype for him and I think it's kind of nuts. I don't hate Dylan Cease. The fact that he had over 30% strikeout rate is amazing. That's because the slider is elite. It's an amazing, amazing, amazing pitch, but the other stuff isn't the fastball sometimes is, but other times he just can't get a strike with it and the slider can't do enough. And all of a sudden he's done overall. The command of Cease is still a problem. He improved it with the slider doing down and into lefties and down and away to righties consistently. Curveball still doesn't wake up all the time. Change it, but doesn't. It's it's essentially one of those three pitches. Fastball, curveball, change it needs to show up. And I don't know if it will. 390 array after really the breakout year. You're expecting another step forward. That's that's kind of tough to do. Not to mention 167 innings across 32 starts. So if you expect 180, that means something needs to change for him to get those 13 extra innings. I don't think you're going to necessarily get that. So be careful with Dylan Cease. He's the premium cherry bomb. I actually want to tell you that Michael Kopech, if it's confirmed he's in the rotation, should be going ahead of Dylan Cease in your draft. The dude throws mid to upper 90s. It's an amazing fastball. Sure, he might come down a little bit in velocity from last year because he won't be in the pen. He'll be in the start. But he was always known as like an upper 90s fastball guy. Slider is fantastic too. Change it. We've seen glimpses of it being amazing. Curveball, not so much. But really think Shane Boz. Like this is Shane Boz. And if he has a starting gig out of the gate for the White Sox, he might even get like slightly more innings because of the volume from last year than Shane Boz. Like, I would rather have this than, than Cease. I think Kopech's stuff is just fantastic. We saw it last year. Ten strikeouts in five innings. Like, that was the one time we saw him start. Like, the small glimpse. Yeah, it just it's the only question is if he's starting or not. You know, I'm going to – I believe he will be, but, you know, something to consider there. Uh, Dallas Keuchel is – I don't even want to talk about him. I don't I don't want anything to do with him. That is the Tobias of Tobies, if at best, and you don't want that. Reynaldo Lopez might steal a spot in the rotation, but honestly, right now, it just feels like it's Kopech, and I don't want Raylo. Show you Otani, man. What's up? You're dope. Uh, Otani, as the starting pitcher, I think – he wasn't ever on the IL last year. It was a blessing. It was the greatest thing ever. We got this amazing season. An assumption that that won't happen again is, I think, a too grand of one. And I know that they were limited his starts because he wasn't feeling so good and they wanted to protect him and all everything. The assumption that he's going to do the same thing again is really, really tough. And I think it's going to be fewer starts than the last year um, for Otani. I think it's too much of a risk uh, for everything to go right. Not to mention his fastball still gets hit way too hard. The splitter, is, as we talked about, is amazing. So is the slider. The cutter for strikes, sure. But, like, they're, the fastball is still a bit of a problem, too. I think all the hype about Otani is pushing him too high up as a pitcher. Uh, Patrick Sandoval, otherwise known as the Irish Panda, which I learned today, Panda is bread soup, apparently. So that's pretty hilarious. Um, <laughs> one of the best typos ever made. Uh, Sandoval has a changeup that had a 29% swing strike rate. Not CSW. Swing strike rate alone last year. Unbelievable. The slider is a fantastic pitch, too. The problem is overall getting strikes with both of them. As long as you can do that, it's the, the changeup is an O swing pitch, not a zone pitch. So he has to get strikes in the zone with that slider. And he needs to sneak in those fastballs. The fastball command can be inconsistent when it's on. It's amazing. There's ace potential here. Like, think about prime Shane Bieber, essentially. 
uh, or Corey Kluber, whatever you want to do. But we don't know if that's going to happen, not to mention the, the injury risk, of course, with the back injury that ended his season early last year. Uh, Noah Syndergaard is going to be there, but he won't have a slider likely, and I hope that the curveball then shows up instead. If it's just fastball changeup, I'm scared. He won't likely have his upper 90s velocity either. I, this is not the injured guy I'm personally chasing. I'd rather go after Severino than Syndergaard. I'd rather go after Clevenger. I'd rather go after Verlander. Uh, Syndergaard, to me, just feels like, I don't know. He also hasn't been amazing for a while. The whip has always been an issue. And that was when he was throwing hard and a slider. And I don't think that's was just because the Mets laugh out loud. Like, no. I think, actually, Syndergaard is a, someone who's a thrower, not a pitcher. Wrote about it years ago, and I still rings true. I think still rings true today. Okay. Speaking of Justin Verlander, here we are. I don't know, guys. Like, it's what's going to happen is he's going to show up and he's going to throw, and hopefully he's sitting 95. If he's sitting 95, not hitting, sitting, more important, everything should be fine. Uh, fastballs up were amazing. Sliders down were amazing. Those are the two things that made Verlander unbelievable. Hopefully he has to feel for the slider back. It's a big leap to say that, yes, he has 95, but honestly, if he has 95, that's top 10. Like, they're just going to let him pitch the entire year. So, something to think about. Uh, it's about you if and what you want to take a chance on. Lance McCullers Jr., we talked to him. It's amazing. Throws a slider going across. To check it out on the Talking and Pitching podcast. Um, he's such a cool guy. <laughs> he gave us all this really awesome information. But really, he, one thing that really stuck with me was the fact that there were starts where he would have a slider, and he would look and look into the dugout, seeing the iPad, oh, my slider isn't as good today, so I'm going to throw curveballs instead. And that kind of... Um, I don't know if I love that just because it means that there's consistency. We saw it from start to start with the curveball and the slider not necessarily both being there at the same time. So that makes me worried about volatility moving forward. The fastball still not this overwhelming pitch. And the breaking balls are amazing, but it's just I need to see both of them working at the same time consistently for me to really buy in. Not to mention, you know, the elbow seems like it's fine. He's going to be okay for opening day. Uh, but we really haven't seen him go 100, you know. 80 innings or whatever like that. So it's all a little bit confusing, a little bit of a hipster headache inducing starting pitchers that stifled the entire roster. So I'm probably not going to be chasing him. Framber Valdez uh, has an amazing breaking ball. The curveball is so good. Uh, the changeup didn't really show up that much last year. Sinker gets hit a little bit too often. If that sinker is getting by, then everything is wonderful. I mean, he can go seven, eight innings with seven strikeouts or so. But it's a little inconsistent. We actually saw that volatility last year. It came out of the gate flying and then all of a sudden slowed down after. So I think you're going to get volume. You're going to get some decent strikeouts. By the way, he had like a 15% ground ball rate, which is absurd. That's why you have like a 3-1 ERA and a 130 whip. I think the whip gets better. But just keep that in mind with Valdez. Like, don't expect this. There is a chance of the sub-3 ERA in like the amazing season. I wouldn't really anticipate that. It's pretty much should be like more the same of 2021. Luis Garcia has an amazing slider that he couldn't throw for strikes. It's really kind of crazy. The CSW was super high, but the strike rate was super low. So essentially, when he didn't execute it, it was bad. It was really, really bad. Um, that makes me a little concerned because as we saw in the later half of the year, he really actually leaned on fastball cutter and pushed away that slider because of that. And that's not good. When he was doing really well, it was cutter slider. And you saw sometimes how that slider is bad. Hello, Jorge Soler. So a little confusing. Uh, what should we be doing with Luis Garcia? I personally am not chasing it. I'm rather actually going with Jose Urquidy instead. I think his repertoire is just better overall. It doesn't have the overwhelming CSW rates that we saw from the cutter um, and slider necessarily uh, of uh, Garcia. But I think the changeup uh, curveball slider fastball combination is just better. I think he's primed for a really nice season. There is injury concerns, of course, as always with Jose Urquidy. But I think he's a very interesting one. And also, don't forget about Jacob Rizzi. You'll probably get some starts this year. Might be a decent streamer if he's allowed to go five plus innings. Uh, Chris Bassett is someone that I've turned on uh, in a good way. Uh, am I behind on time? I am. Oh my God. Uh, Chris Bassett's four seamer became a strikeout pitch. And that's a very, very important thing to know. Uh, so it's, it's much more appealing for me. He's going to get a wonderful ratios for you. I don't really know if it's going to be as wonderful as last year. It might be close to a Toby still, but the strikeout rate, I believe more in being a 22 to 25% rate because of that four seamer. Uh, Sean Manaya through like 93. He actually had like increased velocity through the end of the year, except for his last two starts where he dropped down to 91. It wasn't as good. So I, I, I want to buy in Sean Manaya. I can't help the fact that like it was 180 innings and he hasn't been that healthy in ages. And, uh, the fastball velocity, I don't know if, how much I can buy into it. So we'll see how that goes. The, sl the slider and changeup can be really good. Uh, but there's just a lot of inconsistency here, see here that makes me a little worried. Frank Amad does a much more in. On the fastball is this absurd uh, strike getting pitch with fast four seamers and sinkers that don't get so crushed. And then when the splitter and slider are on, just a splitter, I mean, think of it like Gaussman's, it's absurdly good. 
And then you have a better slider than Gaussman has. Gaussman has a better fastball, but the slider, when it gets strikes, it's great. Everything is wonderful. He doesn't have to rely on fastballs inside the zone, but he'll go six plus innings for Oakland consistently. I think this is a really good rock for your team. Sure, there'll be ups and downs a little bit, but through the year, I think you'll love Frankie Montas. And James Caprillion is just like Cal Quantrill and Casey Myers. These guys that throw fastball slider and it gets, it works. You know, it's not nothing exciting. I don't really think there's an ascension for James. But uh, if you're looking to fill out some starts in the first couple of weeks, definitely consider James Caffillion. Um, others to consider uh, here was Cole Irvin. Oh, yeah, do not touch Cole Irvin. That's a Toby at best. Don't do that. Oh, boy. Robbie Ray. I, I believe in this. I believe that Robbie Ray made the adjustments of fastballs inside the zone and then sliders underneath and really actually not nibbling with fastballs that turned him into who he was last year. Yes, he's going to have a little bit elevated of, of a home run rate because of it. I do believe that once, you know, there'll be a medium involved here of sliders to keep people off of the the fastball. Same with the curveball being reintroduced as well. But yeah, Safeco helps him a ton. Seattle's going to rely on him all the time. Like, I am so very much in on Robbie Ray. The volume of strikeouts is just going to be so high, and it will not be ratios that hurt you. I'm very much in. Uh, Marco Gonzalez, on the other hand, could have ratios that hurt you and not enough strikeouts. The uh, the cutter got way worse was a major thing between uh, 2021 and sorry 2020 and 2021. He tried to make up for it with changeups instead, which are good but not that great, and uh, it's just not really something I want to chase. There were some nice stretches of the season where he got into a nice groove. You can be on the lookout for that, but this isn't something that you want to rely on. If if he's able on the waiver, waiver wire at the right time, maybe consider it. But in your drafts, it's just not the thing to do. Um, Chris Flex, the same idea. I mean, that was we knew this was a Vargas role last year. We're not really buying it so much this upcoming year. I think he's a guy that avoids the heart of the plate decently well, always in a rhythm, and that allows him to keep you with a you know good rate, decent enough ratios essentially. Don't chase Flex in your drafts; it's just not worth it. Uh, Logan Gilbert is so exciting. Uh, four seamer is such an elite pitch, but he didn't have anything else really to 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 complement it, save for the slider at times last year when it was really good. When those two pitches were working, oh my, it was amazing. But it wasn't always there. Changeup and curveball could come along too. I think the changeup has a better chance than the curveball. Uh, we'll see. But he's going to get the volume this year. It's probably going to be pushing 150, 160, going past it for the Mariners. They're going to rely a lot on Logan Gilbert. And because of the foundation of the fastball, it's very, very exciting. I'm a little bit behind. There are others there. There's so many others actually to consider. Justin Dunn is actually coming back, which is kind of cool. Uh, and maybe that increased velocity can be there. George Kirby. Uh, if someone will be there, Justin Sheffield don't care. Matt Brash is very interesting. We'll see how that goes. And Brandon Williams, actually, uh, is a, Williamson, I should say, is, is very interesting as well. John Gray, I'm actually kind of in on this. Uh, slider, uh, vast, fastball velocity went up, and slider was really amazing. Now he's in Texas. I, I like. I see him going like at, like super late. I'm like, uh, why not just take him right away? I'm like, oh, yeah, John Gray's really good because he's outside of cores now. Like, I would do that. Everyone else, I don't care. Spencer Howard, don't make me talk about you. Kobe Allard, no. AJ Alexi, Taylor Hearn, Glenn Otto, all this stuff. Do not care for 12-teamers. 30-second um, break. Okay. Woo! Guys, I, uh, you know, did you sign up to win a prize? Hope you did, because we're going to the NL now. Have you contributed yet? You should. You know, it's for a good cause. It's for, uh, it's for feeding America and all that stuff. Yeah, I'll make up the time. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Whew. All right, help us reach our goal, okay? All right, let's do this. Uh, let's do this with my pitcher list water bottle. Can't sell that one. If you want it, reach out to me. <laughs> okay, here we go. <clears throat> and thanks for being here, guys, really. Y'all are the best. All right, here we go. Let's go to Atlanta. We've got Max Freed. Oh, I love Max Freed for this season. I think the whip is going to be amazing. 109 for two straight years. I think that can be replicated again. The fastball actually got a little bit better, I think, as the year went on. The curveball turned into the bigger pitch. I think actually there's a strikeout element that's missing, 23%, 24%. That could be 30% if the slider really shows up. We were expecting it to show up a couple years ago. It hasn't quite yet, but I think there's a lot of potential there. And also the curveball's gotten better too. I really love Max Freed this year. Uh, Charlie Morden, uh, I think, is just a question of health. Like if he's pitching, if he's on the field, he's going to be like a 3-5 ERA with a really good whip and a lot of strikeouts. Like, you want Charlie Morton. It's the, it's the easiest decision because it won't be out of lack of ability. It's just going to be out of health. I'm for that. That's a much better thing to bet on because then it'll be production when you have him, and then there'll be someone else when you don't. Ian Anderson, uh, I think, has a lot more potential. He's only going to be – he's still 23. He's going to be 24 in the middle of the season. 
uh, the dude has an amazing changeup, uh, fastball and curveball. And the curveball we actually saw get 13 whiffs against the Marlins last year. I know the Marlins, but they're still showcasing some potential that could take off. The fastball and really just the overall command is the big thing that needs to be coming. It's just about time going north-south for him. But I really think that over time we're going to see some legit stuff from Ian Anderson. He's still so young. Um, Oscar Reno is being forgotten about. I've talked about it a lot. Uh, first few months of the season was amazing. Then he hit his hand on the bench and then wasn't the same quite after. Uh, slider is elite. Fastball is over 96, 97. Yes, the command is an issue of that fastball, but I mean, we saw him in a rhythm with that fastball in the first two months. I think he can get back to that and be like just an SP3 or 4 for you. It's kind of crazy. Um, Sandy Alcantara is the best. Yes, I'm so excited to talk about him. I'm not going to talk about any other of the guys uh, for the the uh, for Atlanta. Tucker Davidson's probably going to be the starter, but uh, Kyle Muller maybe at some point. No one else to consider it, say, for Mike Soroka later on this season. That was going to be like July, so don't worry about that. Sandy Alcantara is so good, and you should really be considering. I'm, I'm actually really tempted to put him in that top tier. I won't, but everything about Alcantara you've been reading is amazing. A two blow up starts last year. That's really it. He would have been like a two five year race. So if we're going to Coors and facing the Dodgers once, I think it's because I gave him the aces going to ace label. He increased the slider in the second half uh, to be a 31% usage instead of 20%. It flipped it with the changeup, and that's when he soared. He's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Trevor Rogers, I actually really like. I think the fastball is such an amazing floor. And the changeup is a really amazing whiff pitch. The big question is the slider and offseason in the second half. He was going through some personal stuff, and I think really messed up his rhythm. You should be loving Trevor Rogers this year. Seriously, think of like a Max Reed light here. This is really, really good. Um, <clears throat> Pablo Lopez, I mean, Max Reed light in the sense, but like a little more strikeouts, but like closest ratio. So he's amazing. Pablo Lopez, I forgot about this for the entire offseason. Last start of the season, he came back on that Sunday after missing with the rotator cuff stuff. Yes, this is three straight years of a shoulder question. That's a big reason I'm against it, kind of. But he threw harder than ever. Like, a tick harder. 95 miles per hour all of a sudden. Average for Lopez's fastball is really good. It's a fastball changeup situation. I wish the cutter or the curveball could take off, but they haven't yet. Over time, I think maybe we'll see some more stuff in this. But really, you should be excited about Pablo Lopez next year. Uh, Jesus Lazardo uh, threw more change, uh, more curveballs and changeups at the end of the year. And no f fewer fastballs, four seamers. That's a good thing. Don't forget about Jesus I mean, remember, it's Jesus Lazardo, and he actually did the adjustments I think he needed to at the end of last year. We'll see what happens there. There are so many Miami pitchers, it's kind of nuts. Uh, Eliezer Hernandez, Sixo Sanchez, Edward Cabrera, Max Meyer. All of them should be on your watch list at the beginning of the year. Eliezer is not really that someone that I'm interested in. Same with Cabrera. Sixo Sanchez, if he actually is starting, that's a cool thing. Max Meyer is their number one prospect, so definitely consider that. Jacob DeGrom is dope. You don't need me. It's just about health. I don't want to draft him because you know he's going to get hurt. Guys, just don't do that to yourself. But uh, considering he has to go in like the first like seven starters. But just, he's dope. And I can't wait to watch more of him. Max Scherzer is great too. Uh, it's it, That's more of a question of are we going to see more degradation or not? The fastball has been getting worse every year. And that's a big problem when it comes to home run rates. But it's good to see that the ratios were excellent last year. Are we going to get 180 innings? I hope so. But uh, we might be like 160 or something like that. Just keep that in mind. Uh, Tywin Walker has a really good fastball. That's everything with him. Increased its velocity last year. Uh, and that made him have that amazing first half and also was able to get by with the sliders and curveballs and changeups that he had. But those aren't good pitches. Those are not good strike out, strike pitches. And the fastball's a little bit worse than the command in the second half, and we've totally forgotten about him as a fantasy industry. I wonder why. Okay, uh, Carlos Carrasco, uh, fastball velocity wasn't bad when it came back. Normally, that's what you see with older pitches when they come back from injury is that that's the concern. It wasn't the fastball velocity. It was the feel of his uh, slider and change. I mean, guess what? He had a bone spur removed from his elbow at the end of the season. Maybe that was why those pitches weren't as good. He's going to come back from spring training. If he's at 94 or 93.5 on that fastball, watch out. Carlos Carrasco could be a really good sleeper, an actual sleeper because he's not inside the top 300 right now. Uh, Steven Strasburg on the Nationals. Yeah, we kind of forgot about him too, I think. Uh, if he's not throwing 92, if he's throwing like 94, and he's actually finally healthy, then yeah, Steven Strasburg could be really, really good again. I don't see why not. The curveball was so good before, and then it's just been lots of injuries time, so we've kind of forgotten it. But once again, like, monitor this in spring training. Um, Josiah Gray is so interesting because the fastball command is not good. But when it is good, when he actually has that rhythm... Man, it, it misses it misses bats, and then he has a curveball and a slider that are both ridiculous. The slider, I believe, actually the curveball is better than the slider as far as results so far. But he has essentially has three pitches, and the Nationals are gonna let him fly. So I'm really interested in this. There will be blowups. I mean, the guy couldn't handle the Pirates at times in September. But keep in mind, like, there's a lot of potential here. Patrick Corbin, don't forget about him. He was actually had the highest velocity he's ever had in September and August last year, and he had a ton of whiffs on the slider. But I think it was a little bit more um, telegraphed than usual. Uh, but yeah, he still exists and he's still throwing hard and like gets with slider whiffs. Like this should kind of work. <laughs>
just want to throw it out there. Um, there's no one else to really mention on the on the on the Nationals. Jo Joan Adon is someone I'm going to be interested in. Maybe Joe Ross when he comes back from Tommy John, but Josh Rogers, Eric Fede, and Paolo Espino do not. Zach Wheeler is amazing. Everything from last year is completely legit. If anything, he should get better. Uh, his slider usage went up. It was a way better pitch for him. It just his fastball is so overwhelming. Like you should love Zach Wheeler. Um, Aaron Nola, I we a lot of talk about okay the home run rates and fly ball rates going up, and I am slightly more concerned I think than the average person. Um, I'm excited about Onola. He's going to get a lot of volume. He's going to get a lot of strikeouts, but I don't really see uh, it's going to be hard for him to be consistent with his command through the entire year to be a sub three array guy. He's like a better version of Luis Castillo, essentially still going to have some volatility, but I'm, I, I mean, he's going to be very good for you. I prefer a little bit more stable guys overall though. I as far as I'm out, I'm sorry. I mean, it depends on where he's going in drafts, but like this is a guy who went on a nice stretch against some really weak opponents and was in rhythm of avoiding the center of the play. I watched a lot of these games, and it's essentially just him not throwing in the heart of the zone and nibbling the corner super, super well. I do not expect this command to be this good. It's a fastball changeup and nothing else. Like, really nothing else. The fastball isn't so overwhelming, too. Um, I'm very worried about this. Uh, I hope it works. I hope it's great, but I don't think like all of a sudden it's like a budding star or something. Uh, Kyle Gibson had this amazing first half and then it fell off. You know, the slider still misses bats, but everything essentially started allowing a lot more uh, batting average. And like, who is their number five of the Phillies? I don't know. Hans Kraus? Uh, someone was saying is Bailey Falter. Like, uh, okay, they'll probably sign somebody. But Kyle Gibson, you don't want to chase. Uh, Corbin Burns is dope. He's going to be my number two. I mean, it, the only question is just how much volume do you get? It was under 170 innings last year. Is it going to be pushed to 200? Probably not because the Brewers. Uh, they have such a good bullpen that they don't need to do it. But it's kind of nuts, like, how many amazing weapons he has. He's a slider that has one of the highest swing strike rates in the majors, and it's under 10% thrown. Probably because of that, it's nuts. He's so good. Um, Brandon Woodruff. Uh, yeah, that number. Uh, <laughs> some number between 68 and 70. Uh, Woodruff is really amazing. Like, the foundation of the fastball is so good. He's going to be the workhorse of the Brewers, I think, not Burns. Uh, which means that you're going to get this fastball. It's going to do great stuff. Change up and slider have just gotten better over the years. Um, I think everybody should be wanting Brandon Woodruff on their team. Um, Freddy Peralta, I go back and forth on. It's so difficult because he does go cross body. But when he's in rhythm of that, he just if he just gets his fastballs in the zone, it's great. But he had a near 10% walk rate because it's hard to do that. And it's really tough to rely so heavily on the contact allowed. It is good right now. But then again, I, this is why I was high on Zach Godley back in the day was because of the contact allowed. And I kind of overlooked the walk rates and the mechanics and stuff just makes me a little bit worried. Um, but the slider introduction last year was just such a game changer for him. So I'm really looking forward to that from Freddie Peralta. I'm more on the side of like, yeah, all right. His fastball is just so unhittable that we're okay. Uh, Eric Lauer increases velocity. He's actually someone that's very interesting, especially in deeper formats. Uh, I think he's going to be good enough ratios, and I think the the Brewers are going to rely on him a ton as their number four. Um, cutter and slide and fastball were really good, well commanded. Like he's kind of like a good Wayne Miley, you know. I think it's good. Um, Aaron Ashby, oh, I want him to get the fifth starting spot. I don't think they're going to do it. I think they're going to give it to Adrian Hauser, um, which is going to be kind of like a Shane Boz thing, but the, the worse I think because it's not just manipulation. It's just kind of like. We don't have a spot for you right now. But Aaron Ashby, the slider is amazing. The changeup is really good. And the fastball is at 96 or so and, and induces a lot of weak contact. Like this is he's amazing. It's just about time for development. And I don't know when it will be this year and how much we'll get, but when it happens, be ready. He's gonna be great. Amazing for Dynasty. Uh <clears throat> Adam Wainwright, excuse me. <clears throat> I need a oh my god, 14. Okay. I'm right there. I'm right there. I got this. Adam Wainwright, I think it was a product of the Cleveland defense last year. And guess what? It's Cleveland. Uh, Cardinal defense last year. And guess what? That's still going to be here. That's there, right? Still amazing. All these gold glovers and stuff. Uh, the curveball has just been so good. He actually even lost a bit of his cutter and it was still good. Um, the fastball is still getting, it's like a lead called strike rate on it. So it should be very good. Actually, like I think Wainwright is okay to draft, but it shouldn't be like a three year, right? We know this. And against bad or against good teams, he's going to struggle a little bit. Jack Flaherty, I think, is one of the more underrated ones. The injury is the question because uh, he missed a lot of the season last year. But honestly, like, the ability is so good. And as long as, you know, I, I considering he came back in relief and the Cardinals were like, yeah, you know, let's just ease you back in. Makes me feel really good about him and his health right now entering next season. Keep in mind, 2020 was COVID stuff. So it's not even like it was, you know, he has an injury history. No, it's just really like last year. And that's just one injury. 
uh, Flaherty can go 180 or something like that. I mean, he, he's still really good, and the Babbitts are going to be low because it's the Cardinals. Slider's really good. Fastball's really good. Has a nice curveball for a called strike. Like, Flaherty's great. Um, Steven, oh, Steve Matz is funny. Steven Matz. <laughs> um, Steven Matz is someone we're talking about because of that Cardinals defense, but he doesn't really have a whiff pitch. Uh, I've been looking for it for ages. Maybe sometimes it's the fastball. Sometimes it's the change up the curveball. He's a Toby, but it, because it's the Cardinals, that we, we care about that. Same with uh, uh, Dakota Hudson and Mike Michaelis. And I will say Steven Matz at times is a little bit better than Toby going over that 20% strikeout rate. But yeah, Dakota Hudson someone I'm very much like into in my deeper formats. Because, yeah, he's going to start a lot and have a low Babbitt again. Like, it's the Cardinals, guys. The Cardinals defense is uh, the number one thing I over underrated last year. And I'm not going to do it again. Um, Marcus Stroman is now with the Cubs. I think Stroman is someone, if you need volume, use a safe volume. Like, he's not going to have a 4-plus ERA. He's not going to have a 140 whip. He might have a 130. It's not out of the question. Um, he's done that before because uh, he's considering how much of a ground ball guy he is. And it's not always the best version of ground balls. And we haven't really seen him soar with his slider or his cutter yet. So uh, when we do, it's amazing. And he's able to push like 25% strikeout rates, but we should expect 20%. He is essentially the best Toby every year. Um, Kyle Hendricks used to be, but not anymore. And it should be better than last year. But why well, take the chance? Honestly, you'll find Chris Flexen or something instead. Just don't do it. Um, Wade Miley, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting because he costs a lot less than the other ones. Um, yeah, he could be a Toby. Keep your eye out for this. Um, Adbert Alzale is actually the next one. Yeah, I don't know why I said in others for that one. Um, Alzale is uh, someone who's very interesting, a really good slider, and can be okay with the fastball. But there isn't enough yet. And there are times when you have these nice stretches, you could just be the fastball slider and do well. But he struggled a little bit in the second half and stuff. And just keep in mind, I'd say play the matchups with Alzale if you want to take a chance on strikeouts and stuff. But there's still a little bit of work left to do here. Um, there's no one else, I don't think, for the uh, for the Cubs, is there? Oh, Alec Mills. Yeah, whatever. And also, the Pirates exist. I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to talk about JT Brubaker. You don't really want to do this. Zach Thompson's kind of interesting, but I don't really want to chase that. But yeah, keep in mind, Zach Thompson, like deeper leagues, very interesting, amazing cutter last year, curveball. He'll get opportunities. Mitch Keller maybe will show up. Uh, Jose Quintana. But like, No. <laughs> Um, all right, Luis Castillo. I Luis Castillo. I think he gets moved. Honestly, um, it would do him a lot of good. Hopefully, somewhere warm. So like you know, April and May every year is always a struggle for him. It's gonna happen again. Okay, be ready for this. Kind of like how we treat Corey Kluber in the past. Second halves are always better for Luis Castillo. Just remember that. Know that. Uh, strikeouts are gonna be there though. Volume is gonna be there. Whip might not because he is a slinger. I don't think he's gonna ever be. A, like 105 whip guy i just don't think that's in his essence but it could be sub three year a or so um and really exciting to watch too so not someone i'm chasing because i don't think of that elite upside with a whip being a problem um tyler molly i don't think there's enough here to really ascend uh we've seen the nice strikeout rates and stuff but that's fueled by the four seamer um and uh that's really really good but the slider isn't good enough and the splitter doesn't kind of shows up at times but like Talamali is going to be like a 3.5 ERA with like a 120 whip or 15 whip or something. Well, 120 whip and like 25% K rate, but that's like what we're hoping for, and it could be war worse than that. I don't really see anything much higher than that. So be careful with Tyler Molly. I uh, Sonny Gray, I want to buy into, but he's just so volatile with his secondary pitches. Like his curveball and a slider just go back and forth, and it's just it drives me nuts. It drives me nuts every single start. So I don't want to buy in. I think he'll do really well for a month and then bad for a month, and like. If you're lucky, you get it for April if you draft him. But I personally just kind of want to avoid it. Uh, Zach Allen. Oh, I love Zach Allen. You guys know this. I'm a Gallon gal. Uh, Zach Allen in Arizona is going to get all the opportunities this year. I mean, he had a really weird injury season for a guy that wasn't an injury risk before. Uh, apparently, he came back. We thought he was going to be out for like an entire season. All of a sudden, he came back within a month after the uh, the forearm injury. And then got hurt with his hamstring. And like he never really got into the rhythm. It's about the secondary pitches coming back. Elite called strike pitch with his fastball. Curveball, cutter, and changeup need to get there. Changeup used to be the elite one last year. Was the curveball working well? Cutter's kind of working itself out. Really a slider. So I expect all of them to kind of improve this year. And Zach Allen can really soar um, in Arizona once he gets back into rhythm. And with a healthy offseason and everything, I think that could actually happen. Ron Marquez. I still need to talk about this guy. I will never draft him because he's just an absolute headache and you'll never make up your mind. That's all I got. Um, Austin Gomber exists, though. And Austin Gomber is someone that uh, you could – Theoretically, use on the road. Just don't do it in Giants and Oracle Park. Ha ha ha. But seriously, the slider was an elite CW pitch, and then he got hurt and really just kind of forgotten about after that. 
consider Gomber through the year for road starts and streams and stuff like that, but it's not someone that I actually want to trust day in, day out. Um, and the other ones you don't want to talk about, it's the Colorado Rockies pitchers. Uh, Joe Musgrove, man, I'm so in on Joe Musgrove. Uh, about 180 innings last year. Uh, and yeah, he can take the workload. He can do this. Uh, his stuff is so filthy. Curveball's nice. Slider's nice. Um, he uses this cutter that kind of hurts him um, to try and steal some strikes, and so does the fastball. But like, I think there's a, an approach here that really works, given how good the secondaries are. Like, Musgrove's going to be great again. Don't worry. Um, you Darvish went up and down with his command start by start. It was seven earned runs, then none in 10 strikeouts or something. Drove us mad. I think a off season where he can understand sticky stuff. Cause remember for sticky stuff, he was amazing. And I think he's figuring it out now to, to be much better. So I think actually it's a really nice discount right now around SP 30 or something like that. I don't know what I've seen. Uh, and I I'm all for you Darvish rebounding. Same with Blink Snell. He changed his approach last year. Uh, four seamers in the middle of the zone and sliders underneath. He actually went to the true Blake Snell blueprint and what I came up with back in 2018. And he lost it because it was throwing too many changeups and he stopped throwing changeups. There is a chance that Blake Snell thinks he's fixed his changeup and now he'll throw more changeups. I won't put it past him. It would drive me nuts. Um, what do I know? I'm just sitting in this stupid murder room. But <laughs> but I but essentially I hope we see fastballs and then sliders and curveballs down again because that's what how he had success. He got hurt, whatever. I think you're going to see that coming out of the gate, and I think you're going to really like Blake Snell. Mike Clevenger is very interesting. I don't know what to expect. I mean, the guy was elite. The guy had two secondary pitches that were amazing. Really, the slider was just so good. Just throwing hard enough. Like, it's all great. It's just I don't know if he's going to be in rhythm right away. I don't think he'll hurt you is the thing, though. So if you're drafting Mike Clevenger, do it in a situation where you don't need to rely on him as like your top four SP. But if he's my fifth, I would be super happy because I, I can then I don't need I don't need to depend on the fifth. I can I'm finding a lot of guys to get that fifth spot, right? So Clevenger is someone I would consider. You know, I see him around 200 or something right now. I'm like, yes, every single time. Uh, Nick Martinez came over from the Padres. He's gonna start uh, from from Japan. Um, he's on the Padres now. Apparently, he's sitting like 94 now, which was like 91 when he was on the Rangers. Uh, something to monitor. Um, this could be and a very interesting like. Uh, I don't want to say Michaelis, but um, we've seen guys have success from coming over. Chris Flexen did, for example. Uh, we just don't know what he is, and uh, we'll see. I'm very, con I'm very intrigued about Nick Martinez and kind of seeing what it is. It could be a very sneaky stream in that first week if the Padres get a good matchup. Um, the others consider Chris Paddock, of course. What's going to happen there? I don't know. I really just have no idea at this point. It's just about the fastball coming back together. Um, we have a Mackenzie Gore. <laughs> we'll see maybe one day. Again, um, but yeah, there's just not really much else to talk about there. Uh, Logan Webb, man. <sighs> I'm going to be wrong about Logan Webb is what my gut says. My gut's, my, my gut's saying don't go after it. I want to so badly um, and do whatever you want. Uh, fastball was had the one of the highest vertical breaks ever for any pitch this past year, I should say. Fly ball rate was like 18%, which I said Framber was ridiculous at 15%, but Logan Webb's 18% would be like the highest of years, you know? Like normally, normally fly ball rates are 24% for the best and 18% for Webb. I think it gets worse. The slider I think was good, but I think overperformed. The changeup is in and out. Like it's not, I, I, I just don't think he's overpowering like the stats suggest. And I think it's going to be going down. He got hurt at the beginning of the year too, so it's not even guaranteed it's 180 innings like y'all think. I don't know. Not y'all think. I'm just making an assumption there. I'm just saying, I think Webb is too risky to be going inside the top 10 or 15 pitchers. Um, Anthony Descofani uh, is very interesting. Uh, he's a fastball slider guy like we talked about before with the Calco Montreal and James Capillion and Casey Mize and stuff. Um, yeah, he should be good. Uh, you, are, He's going to be a fringe Toby, though, at times. And if he's not doing well in April, just move on from him. If you need some filler at the end of the your rotation or something like that to get some volume, Descofani is a good one. Um, Alex Wood also, too. I mean, he increased his velocity last year to about 92. Slider was really good. It start, we started seeing it really good at the end of 2020, and then we saw it again in 2021. The changeup isn't quite there, but that's okay. He's in he's in San Francisco and doing really good things there. I would very much consider Alex Wood in the same way, like Descofani, actually a little bit more than Descofani. Uh, Walker Bueller. Uh, lots of lots of talk. I see from Alexander Chase being like, yeah, I'm not so in on Walker Bueller and like too much too much uh, hard contact, not soft contact, all that kind of stuff. I understand it. Sticky stuff did affect him, and I am in the belief that Walker Bueller will be better next year than he was in 2021. I think his stuff is just overall too good, and the fact that he went over 200 innings with a good defense with him in, in, in LA with a lot of win potential. I'm still in on Walker Bueller. I don't think that he's just going to be worse and worse and worse. I think actually like you're going to see, oh, he found his curveball. He found his slider. He found his cutter back. Like, he just needs one of those to click, and all of a sudden it's, oh, yeah, right. You're going to be a 2-5 ERA again. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty cool on Walker Bueller. 
Um, Julio Urias, I'm also in on. Um, it was 180 innings last year. It was actually up to like 200 because of the uh, the postseason. But honestly, the curveball is so good. The changeup gets a ton of outs, and that can actually be even better. The fastball is dominating the top of the zone. He's very efficient. Doesn't walk guys. Like Julio Urias is fantastic, and the way that LA has treated him over the years, like I think he's good health wise. I'm not actually too worried about this. So I, I'm very much in on drafting Julio Urias. Uh, Tony Gonsolin is a very interesting one there too. Um, he wins a war, of course, for the best mustache out there. Uh, and it will hopefully, again, I want the Zappa look again. But essentially, I think he should be the last starter for the Dodgers. It's very co- interesting right now because it's just Bueller and Urias, really, at the moment. Then you have Bryce, Heaney, Gonsolin. I think they're going to sign at least one guy, if not two. But I think Gonsolin would be the one of those last three that would stick around. So I, I think that the slider was worse last year. Um, that was a major pitch of it propelling his earlier seasons. Splitter, fine, whatever. And the fastball got crushed because the slider wasn't as good. And that can be fixed. That can actually come back. We'll see what happens there. David Price, I would not consider whatsoever. Uh, and Andrew Heaney, do not take their chance. Like, that's just such a – don't do that. Do not chase Andrew Heaney. Just the idea that the Dodgers was say, yeah, cool, go out there for six innings, Andrew Heaney, cons- consistently to me is already just no. There's no way. Um, so free agents exist. If you're wondering why, like, oh man, running out of teams. Yeah, free agents exist. So I got a couple couple guys I got to mention here. First off, as of course, Clint Kershaw with the Dodgers. I think he's going to sign there. Uh, fastball is still this amazing commanded pitch. And the slider actually went up to about 50% usage last year. And is the best slider in the majors, essentially. It, it's kind of stupid how well it misses bats. And the fact that it's thrown so often and has so much success. I think that should stick around. It's just about volume, how much you're going to get, but it's going to be beneficial. I don't think he continues to descend in ability. Yusei Kikuchi and about 25 others more. Uh, Yusei Kikuchi, uh, it's kind of interesting. He uses his fastball as a strikeout pitch, and then it's cutter and slider as his strike-getting pitches. Um, so I I think there is some potential there. I think there's more to squeeze out of the cutter and the slider. Um, so definitely be on the lookout where he lands. Tyler Anderson is someone who's going to be a Toby and definitely see where you go. Same with Michael Pineda. Kwon Young Kim might be going to Japan, but if he's not, like, we'll be, I'm interested. I'm wondering if that sub three year right they had with the Cardinals because it was the Cardinals. Zach Greinke is going to pitch. I don't know. Max, Matthew Boyd might be coming back from Tommy John, and I'm curious where he's going to land. Garrett Richards is someone to consider. Oh, yeah, Matt Harvey exists. Just kidding. Moving on. Lastly, for 100, of course, 100 mile per hour, Carlos Rodon, baby. I, I think that he's getting a little too... I don't know, underdrafted just because he did this for five months. And then of course the shoulder hurt, but if you draft him and he's healthy, you're going to get a lot of elite production out of him. And even if it's for half a season, it's going to be really, really good. But I I'm, I'm kind of really excited to see what happens to Carlos Rodon. Shazam. We did it. (laughs) Oh, there we go. Carlos Rodon. All right. Whew. I'm going to, I'm just going to, oh my God. <laughs> There's so many things I wanted to say. I totally forgot. Oh, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, that absolute <laughs> ridiculous moment. I've lost my voice for four days now. Um, but yeah, I, I want to say more about Carlos Redon, but I can't. Pencils down. We're all done. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed the rants of that. Uh, I'll have my top 100 rankings out uh, on PL7 launch day, which you guys will find out all about on late Saturday night. I didn't check about uh, any contributions or anything. Oh, my gosh. Look at all of these. You guys are amazing. Oh, thank you so much for all these donations. Where are we at right now? What is the, what is the total uh, for, uh, for PitchCon at the moment? I'm, I'm catching my breath. All right, we're at $1,330 $1, raised. Fantastic. Uh, Lee, so happy to be part of the Pitchless team and, and support such a great cause. Yeah, thank you so much. Joshua, thanks for all the great content. Robert with $100. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. Mark with $50. Uh, you guys are incredible. Thank you so much for supporting us. Uh, we, we're going to keep moving on uh, pretty soon. Uh, we got, we got three, I got three minutes, but I should have done this in 55 minutes. You know, oh my God, I could have, I could have given myself more and more time. Was there someone I didn't mention? I mean, comments right now. Uh, oh, thank you guys all so much for the, uh, for the comments here. <laughs> you guys are amazing. I, uh, th- yeah. Is, was there a picture that I didn't talk enough about? I'm sure that Glenn Otto, oh, yeah, Glenn Otto. I know it's the Rangers guys. Good slider, really good slider. A lot of horizontal movement on it, but it's, uh, Oh, I didn't do the others for the Dimebacks. Thank you, uh, Finstick. 
Yeah, Glenn Otto, maybe over time, he's not supposed to be in the rotation right now, apparently, according to roster resource. Um, someone to consider, but I don't I don't think there's enough quite there. The slider's good, but the fastball isn't really amazing. Um, so I'm not going after Zach Eflin. Sure, he's going to come back in like May or June. Um, so that's a problem. But, I mean, he should be fine when he does. Is he the IL slash I want to go after? Well, it might be a situation where like Eflin comes back and you say, do I active him from the IL? Go, no, no, no. Still ill, so we're not supposed to do it. Then he comes back and he's mediocre. You're like, do I still want to do this? You know, and then then that's a full IL spot for April, which you probably will want to drop instead. So not a huge, huge thing. Cody Morris know nothing about. Okay, interesting. Cody Morrison for a deep cut. Oh man, I haven't seen him pitch, so I don't I can't really tell you anything about him. Luke Weaver is an interesting one. Um, he had success in 2019 because the cutter was used as strikes in the zone and he was able to throw fastballs in there more effectively because the cutter was that good. The cutter's gone. So he tried to do that in 2020 without that cutter working got destroyed i mean that fastball is like one of the most demolished pitches in all of baseball it was pretty ridiculous so i'm not i don't really have high hopes for luke weaver the dude is the coolest guy the, the, the talking pitching podcast we did with luke weaver was the most chill one we've done i mean i just felt like i wanted to go bowling with him like i that's what i do with my best friends i just want to hang out and go bowling i would in an in instant have gone i'd be like hey man we're going bowling you want to come luke like what a cool dude <laughs> oh, I got I gotta say Christian Javier oh, I should mention him good call there uh he is very interesting he doesn't have a spot though and I, don't, I mean maybe he loses it or gets it from Luis Garcia or something like that but I mean he should get some opportunity considering someone likely will get injured in that in that Astros rotation given all the injury risk very intriguing has a fastball and a, and a breaking ball the breaking ball is I think really good but uh he's, he's a little sporadic the fastball at times was really good elevated uh for whiffs but not it, there's not quite enough for me to really push him into this guy has got like elite potential, but he actually could go on a nice run for you. Um, but I, 